it's the .NET Community Roundup with Scott Hanselman and John Galloway. Hello, guys. Hello. Hey. Yeah, wow. I'm afraid to push any buttons now. I know. <laughs> <Yeah>. I, <laughs> I pour a Ford. It's all good. Well, it's fortunately, good. we have just one laptop between us. Yes, we only so. had the budget for one laptop. We've been using most of our budget on things like apparently the folks during the .NET Conf party have right. been getting drunk on Peeps. <laughs> and if you're not from America, you can learn about Peeps candy. They're just a trash candy. They're not good. <laughs> They're not good I for mean, you. But you can't stop eating them. You Once can't. you eat one, then you're like, maybe another one would make it better. It's and an it's, addictive chemical. Yeah, it's not good. Cool. So we've got a couple of different things to share with you. We about. got a lot. So a community roundup is kind of like a, a roundup of a bunch of stuff. Um, one thing is we've got these amazing. We've got. We, it's so cool watching these things. It, we had some added like today and yesterday. So 217 mm -hmm. worldwide. It's great looking around the world. It was fun, like we, we were noticing, like a lot through Africa. I mean, like all around the world, it's cool watching them pop up. We're getting so. a lot more .NET user groups, a lot more .NET Conf local viewing parties. Yep. Uh, and we, we point out South America, Africa, all over uh, Asia. We're mm -hmm. getting a lot more folks getting involved. We want to make it as easy as possible for you to put together a user group. Yeah. So there's a couple things going on here. Of course, these are .NET Conf local viewing parties, mm -hmm. local get-togethers, but you can put together a user group. We've set up the .NET Foundation paperwork here for you to make your own user group, right? Yeah, yeah. So this, um, we've got these .NET meetups, mm -hmm. and then Meetup has this thing with a whole Meetup Pro. Okay. And what, what's cool with that is it's an organization where you can join that, we'll pay your fees, and then also we can send messages out to all the meetups, and we can say, hey, we got this thing coming up. We've got .NET Conf local. You want in? you know, fill out this little form and we'll send you swag. So yep. we sent all these hundreds of events worldwide, we sent them stuff around the world, which is pretty neat. So this is, I mean, th this is, we're up to 62 countries now. Mm -hmm. um, Almost a quarter of a million members. So if there is not a meetup near you, mm -hmm. why not make one, right? A meetup doesn't yep. have to be 300 people that meets every week, right? It could be a couple of dozen people that can, meet you once know, a month. And so, some cool ones are ones like in a company. So, you know, it's just a, you work in a, in a dev shop and maybe there's, you know, 50 devs or whatever, start a meetup there, you mm -hmm. know. So, yeah, um, th there's a link over here on the side where it says add .NET meetup. Or you can just ping me or ping, ping .NET Foundation on Twitter and we'll, we'll get you added. And there's a lot of value in this. You hear people saying, well, maybe this is a good opportunity for you to become a, a technical speaker. Uh, in fact, I think it's actually a really good opportunity to learn because mm -hmm. when you can speak about a topic, you actually learn more about it yep. because you prepare for the talk. So to your point about giving presentations to uh, your local and or your internal company, mm -hmm. having a brown bag and just presenting on what you're doing is a great opportunity to kind of flex that muscle inside of you about how to explain a topic clearly how to build a story arc. Yep. Uh, it makes you a better engineer. Absolutely. I mean, that's that's how I got started with technology and presentations was going to my local user group, watching some, and then signing up for a little 10-minute lightning talk, and mm -hmm. and my machine crashed, and I got through it, and then I just kept practicing, you know, and that, I mean, it's really fun to, to and and then, you know, to, to be able to, once we've got these local events, to be able to do cool stuff like this. Yep, so, so. definitely reach out. If there's anything that any of us can do, at the .NET Conf hashtag, at the foundation, mm -hmm. at Microsoft to get you started with a user group, whether it be an internal or an external one. You let us know, yep. and we'll do the best we can to support you. And one thing that we do as part of that is we have this presentations in a box thing. Mm -hmm. um, so you'll see today, we've been, as the speakers leave, after they finish their presentation, because you know presentation, the, the they're updating their, their stuff right up to the last minute, right? So we've been dropping them all in here. They're uh, .NET Conf 2019. These are all the, the um, ones from there. We also have some workshops, and you can see like the ASP.NET Core for Beginners was updated today. All of these, the Blazor and the ASP.NET Core App Workshop have updates for .NET Core 3 on different branches. So th those, are, um, those are actively updated by the product teams. And when we say presentations in a box, we're literally saying here it is, ready to go. Mm -hmm. You could go and present a full week on ASP.NET and structure that week however yep. you wanted to do it. You could do this in an afternoon. It just depends on how you want to stretch that out. If you are a university professor or if you're teaching, you could certainly go in and put this into your curriculum. And for, as far as .NET Conf is concerned, if you wanted to present some of the content that we've just done mm -hmm. in your local language, do that. Grab the slides. We'll try to give you all the slides. We'll give you all the code and all the support. And then you could go and present that to maybe to people who didn't get a chance to see .NET Conf. And, and if people do that in their own like their own language, like let us know, and we can help like get the word out for you. Right now, a little trick that I do is all these kinds of things. If like for instance .NET Conf, you've seen Blazor talks presented by like Dan Roth, or mm -hmm. you know you've seen the keynote presented by Scott Hunter. You can grab these slides. You can watch the video. 
and practice. And that, I do that. Like I'll say, hey, I'm giving a blazer talk. Let me see, you know what I mean? And yeah. it's great structure. It's a great place to start with. And then so. make it your own. You can feel mm -hmm. free to take any of these, fork them, change yep. them, update them. And then if you have a workshop, if you created something, uh, yeah. share it with us because so, we also put in eBooks and third-party workshops. Yep, and we have some community, um, some workshops like this ACA.net workshop. This one, Doty, has built 250 plus, I think it's almost 300 now, ASP.NET Core samples. And he just shares those out and, and regularly lets us know as he updates them. This one here, this, uh, this ebook here, uh, Shahed's built this out. And this was built out of weekly blog posts. And he wrote an entire book and he's just given it away as a PDF. And we had him on the ASP.NET community stand up to talk about it. And it's just really cool to see, you know, how so so we try and share out what the community is doing and the, these different, you know, links they make available. And, and one thing I want to point out as well is that just because you're maybe not an expert or you're just learning, I'm still learning, you're mm -hmm. still learning, even though we're making the product, we're still learning. Don't feel like you can't blog or write an ebook or get involved because you don't necessarily know the topic fully. Mm -hmm. You know your experience. You yeah. know how you have found it. So blog about your feelings about it. Yeah. Blog about how it, you know, this is how we implemented ASP.NET in our company. This is how our migration to .NET Core mm -hmm. went down. Here's what worked, here's what didn't. Because your story, your unique experience is worth blogging about. And if you turn it into something like an ebook, we will definitely try to get the word out about it. And some of the best learning I've done is when I blogged, here's something I think I've learned, and someone says, that's pretty good, but did you know about this? And then it's like, oh, wow, I could do, you know what I mean? And it's a great way to, to reveal ways where you can improve even more. Absolutely. So one thing, speaking of learning, this is amazing. Yeah, so this is something we've been working on very, very hard, and we're very proud of this. You can actually get to this from a short URL, which is dot, dot net, so D-O-T, dot net slash videos that's our short url and it'll redirect redirect you here you can also go to dot dot net and click on learning it's under videos and what this is is a series of videos exclusively for beginners so you have to ask yourself what does that mean how beginner is beginner are we talking about 10 year olds are we talking about people with some understanding we try to go right down the middle because we feel that there are people who are learning software in college mm -hmm. and there are people who are learning software in boot camps and sometimes they don't necessarily get the big picture. They don't get the full picture. So what we tried to do is put together a kind of a, a Mr. and Mrs. Rogers neighborhood style, slow moving, friendly on ramp into .NET. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we find ourselves speeding through file new project, right click deploy. Look, it worked. Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody go, go, go. This is 101 content. I think a lot of our previous 101 content was really 201 content. Yeah. If you're not familiar with that nom nomenclature in uh, universities in the U.S., of course, you have first year of university, second year of university. This is very much first year. So I want you to check it out. C Sharp 101 really just talks about the language, like literally down to the keyword, not even thinking about .NET. I really liked watching these, the, the way that you built them up in a friendly way and you it takes a conscious effort to do that, right? Because it's very easy to focus on, here's what I know I want to show off this, thing, this new thing. But stepping back to the level of explaining a concept and doing, now's the right time, let's talk about what is this using thing mm -hmm. here? What is that? So I, I really feel like the approach you did here was, they're fun to watch. I appreciate that. And what was great was that we, every, we, we partnered everybody up here. We partnered everyone up to get a different perspective on what was going on. So if I use an acronym that maybe someone doesn't know, then my partner goes and says, well, hang on, what does mm -hmm. that mean? Uh, there were a couple of times in the .NET one uh, where Kendra said, well, wait, what, what's this mean? Or I said, hang on, let's do a whole video on just Hello World. And we had a lot of fun. And these are, I think there's about 80 or 90 videos that we did. They're very short. Mm -hmm. They're, uh, you know how they say that the, you could make one nine hour video or you could make a, you know, 90, 10 minute <laughs> videos. These yeah. are the ones that you can binge on. They're actually up on YouTube. They are also on channel nine. So if YouTube is not available at your work or in your country, I want to make sure that we're going to uh, we, we do recognize that we will have alternative downloads for everybody as well as being able to download them all offline. Yeah. Uh, so check those out. Those are our 101 videos, dot, dot net slash videos. So speaking of the dot, dot net things that are new, we mm -hmm. also added dot, dot net stand up. So this is the ASP.NET and dot net community stand up. Uh, we used to have it was live.asp.net and we didn't have a good kind of central place for doing um, for, for seeing all the different stand-ups that we do because we've added in like Xamarin, we've added in uh, desktop, all these, all these, because part of the advantage of .NET is you can build all kinds of stuff mm -hmm. with it, right? And some of these are really, really important because you get to talk to people that you don't always see. You get to talk to the actual designer. Mm -hmm. So here we've got Kathleen Dollard sitting with Emo and they're talking about 
you know, the language and the runtime and the low yeah. level stuff. So whatever topic you're into, whether it be building a web framework in the ASP.NET stand up, yeah. or doing Xamarin and making a mobile application, or some of the internal details about actually designing the next version of C Sharp, yep. we've got the stand up for you. These are the real people that are actually doing the work, which is really, really cool. Part of this too is we added support in here for these community links. So we're using the URL list, which, which uh, Burke and Cecil built. And, and so this is a way where we can go in and share out because we want to show off things the community is building. Mm -hmm. And as part of that, we list all these links here so that you can go and, and get them. So we don't want the, just the links to fly by in the video and you say, that's neat. We actually want you to go and subscribe to the blogs or you know learn more, um, try and out the code. And if you're doing something cool, send mm -hmm. me a tweet, send John a tweet, yep. send anyone on the team a tweet. We'll collect those. And if we feel that it's interesting and of general interest, we'll share it on the stand up and we'll continue to promote your uh, your content or your project or whatever it is that you're working on and you're excited about. Small little shout out too. This is actually for people that were watching, James Montemagno and I were building this live streamed on Twitch over the past several months. And so we built this prototype out and it actually ended up, um, this we were able to transfer this over to the team. So that mm -hmm. was fun. Cool. So, yep. Um, cool. All right. Well, so just along with .NET Foundation stuff, we've talked about it. Um, we mentioned some, some we had some announcements. Um, Today we talked about uh, AWS joining as a uh, corporate sponsor. We also talked about this this uh, maturity model, and it's kind of involved. Um, there's some blog posts and some some docs and stuff, so you can go read through it. But the, the best thing is if you want to get more involved in how the .NET Foundation works, in uh, you know new policies, programs, and stuff we're building out, you can go and check out on the .NET Foundation website and click on uh, membership. And is it hard to be a member? Do I need to pay lots no, of money? No, and this is something where I think I haven't communicated as if well. If I don't as have I a should. credit card, no, I have okay. like thousands of dollars. First of all, as you join, you have an opportunity to pay dues. And the like default amount is $100. Are you paying Microsoft to do No, no. Okay, so Microsoft does not touch this money. It goes directly. .NET Foundation is a separate nonprofit. So it's a nonprofit. This is not money that Microsoft gets to no, use for stuff. Not at all. So it goes to things like sponsoring projects. Uh, we have we have some set aside. We're looking at doing things like sponsoring local events and stuff in the future. Mm -hmm. um, so, so this is money that's actually available to the board of directors, which is community elected. One of those out of seven is Microsoft. The rest are community elected. So, okay. Yeah, so, um, so also- you can pay dues, you said, but you don't, if you're you a student- You don't have to. If you're a student, you don't have to. Student, you don't have to. If you are just somebody and you're applying, you're like, I'm not sure about this. I don't know if I want to apply because I don't want to pay any money or I'm a little tight this week or whatever it is. Don't pay any or pay $5. Like it's a sliding, it, it, it's, uh, and nobody will look at it. So you go through and, and you no say, one will see it. Nobody will see it. So basically, if you go and you say, $10 is what I'm able to pay, then it checks off the thing and the neg screen that says, hey, did you look at the dues? That goes away forever. Nice. Or if you say opt out, it says, great, you've seen it, we're done. So, and what do you get for membership? What is being a that's member That's a great question. So the, some of the main things are you can vote in the elections. We have annual elections. Mm -hmm. So that is, I mean, the board of directors runs the .NET Foundation. That is, they are in charge. They say exactly what happens, what projects join, what we're going to focus on, what we do. Also, uh, so you can both vote in and run for the elections. Um, another thing is we have these action groups, and this is a way that you can get, become involved in things. So say you're interested in outreach and you would like to see more, you know, more diversity in .NET ecosystem. We have an outreach group led by Sarah Chips, and, and they, they're actively like working on things. What do we want to focus on? How can we get more people involved? Um, so, and then there's other ones. There's this technical, um, this, uh, this technical steering group, yeah. there's outreach ones, there could be something around education. If there's yep. one that doesn't exist that you wanted to potentially propose and run, one. we could create one. I, absolutely, yeah. So there we go. Uh, I, was, I, ha I need to make sure at the end of this we talk about the virtual attendee parties, but did you want to? So we have a little time there's here. There's a bunch of stuff going on. I wanted to point a couple of things up. May I take your, yeah, yeah. I take your laptop over here? and move it a little bit closer to just me. Just don't brush the protective layer of dust off of the It is the just keyboard. a filthy, filthy laptop. <laughs> um, one of the things that I mentioned a little bit, I just wanted to talk about, which I thought was super fun, because uh, I, I casually mentioned it during one of the Q&A, was I took an uh, this application. It was a, uh, a PlayStation emulator. Someone had basically asked the question, uh, well, I don't know if .NET's you know, fast enough or whatever enough to do it, to emulate another computer. Right. And uh, this very nice uh, student went and created an emulator in C Sharp, uh, and it's up at GitHub, and you can go and check it out. It's called Project PSX. 
And uh, what I thought was interesting about it was not just that .NET could go and emulate something like this. It was very, very fast. Mm -hmm. But I opened it up into Visual Studio Community. And it's important to remember that Visual Studio Community is free. Free, yep. Uh, it's free for open source, free for students, free for small businesses of a certain size. Check out the license. And I wanted to convert this from .NET uh, 4.7.2, mm -hmm. so Windows-specific .NET, over to .NET Core using WinForms, right? Because yep. .NET Core, you can now swap .NET, .NET out from underneath WinForms, put .NET Core underneath, and see if I could get more perf. Yeah. Well, because you've got a different runtime, you know, .NET Core oh, is, it's almost like a brain this, transplant. It's, it's like, yeah, it's on the outside, it's the same thing, but the brain is all of a sudden like mm -hmm. super smart. And, and it brought up a lot of really interesting questions. So first, because .NET Core 3 now supports WinForms, you might think to yourself, well, maybe that means it's going to be a lot larger. Mm -hmm. Well, WinForms is a NuGet package, so it's optional, right? It's not necessarily going to come along for the ride unless you want it to be. Mm -hmm. So all I did was make a new project, dragged all of these over into the new project, then fixed up the uh, references mm -hmm. and immediately uh, got the thing running. It took about 20 minutes. Now, everyone's different, but yeah. it shows that this particular individual's code was extremely clean. They were just using file streams and binary readers mm -hmm. to open up the different things that they wanted to open up. And again, this is all just an educational thing. Uh, you know, Certainly, if you're going to be doing anything with an emulator, make sure that you own uh, licenses to all the things you want to use. But it's really, really interesting that folks are going and doing this work. When I put it on .NET Core, it was like about 30% faster, 30% more. For like basically 20 minutes of work. Yeah, for basically 20 minutes of work. And that's just <laughs> one fun example, but there's a bunch of examples. You know, like there's that. so much stuff that doesn't even get talked about, but with .NET Core, all this, all the work that goes into optimizing the low-level internals, like string performance and, uh, and uh, hardware intrinsics and that yep, kind of span stuff. span of T. All those things, and so it's like you can just by moving to the newer versions, all of a sudden your code runs way faster. Yep. It's like for, for and free. That brings up a really important point that there's lots of different things about what does it mean to be fast, right? Is it to start up fast? Mm. Well, there's things that you can do, you know, to make sure that your code starts fast. Uh, is it steady state speed? Mm -hmm. uh, do you want your code to be really, really small? We try to make it so .NET Core is as flexible as possible to fit the scenarios that you want, whether it be on a Raspberry Pi or with some of our community projects like Wilderness Labs on a microcontroller or yep. whether it be on an Android device or an iPhone. Uh, you know, it's everywhere you want to be. Speaking of which, I think th there is an update on the schedule and you're going to be showing off Wilderness Labs tomorrow morning? Uh, yeah, so uh, tomorrow at uh, 7.30, uh, towards the end of the evening on Twitch, uh, I've got a brand new beta of Wilderness Labs, Wilderness Labs Meadow. Uh, they got their beta three. And this is a really, really interesting connected things platform. Again, not associated with us, but just from the community. But it's .NET. It is running .NET. So what it does, if you're familiar with it, here you go. It's the full .NET standard on a microcontroller, not on a microprocessor. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not a full computer. Mm -hmm. It is a, kind of like a, a single task device. It's real IoT. So instead of a Raspberry Pi, which runs a full version of Raspbian or a full version of Windows 10, mm -hmm. uh, this is just going to run your library. Integrates with your cloud however you want it to integrate with. And uh, they gave me one of these. Here it is. It looks kind of like that. And I'm going to try to get some, uh, some hello. And it's very early days. I got beta 3. Okay. But it's got a lovely deployment experience. You just plug it in over USB, you hit F5, it deploys, and you're basically flashing the firmware of the device, and it basically boots into .NET. Wow. And it's doing that compilation up front using Mono. So you can do something like this, say a temperature sensor, go and look at a threshold for that, and then look, a nice .NET event, temperature change with a anonymous Lambda there, and you go and say, all right, when the temperature changes, update the LCD and tell me the temperature. So cool. what's exciting about that is that for everyone who's watching this right now and you say, oh, I'm a C-sharp developer and I do WinForms, or I'm a C-sharp developer and I do you know, MVC, mm -hmm. uh, you, you just became an embedded systems developer. Yeah. Or if you watch Shane Boyer, Boyer's thing, you just became a Kubernetes developer. Right. right? That's or what an I ML think, developer or a or game ML, developer. Exactly. That's what I think is so exciting about yeah. .NET right now is that we're all being able to take our existing knowledge and our existing experience. So if you learn C Sharp today, you learn .NET today, you learn some of these great languages and great libraries, you can go and apply that anywhere from 64K to 64, I don't know, terabytes. You know, one other thing we mentioned talking about was the try.net and that kind of learn experience. Mm -hmm. Did you want to show some of that? Yeah, so try.net is interesting. And I just, you know, when I Google 
uh, with Bing for stuff, I just put Hanselman uh, <laughs> after it all the time. It just makes it easier to find what you want. Uh, so try.net global tool is this thing that powers the documentation as you go around to docs.microsoft.com. And you can go and get this global tool and check it out. It's really, really cool. In fact, you can just go and say .NET tool install and in install try.net. And then you can say, in fact, .NET try demo, which is pretty cool. That allows you to run basically interactive documentation. It'll say local host mm -hmm. and you'll have your own docs locally writing .NET in the browser. That's a key thing. I think a lot of people have seen try.NET in the browser, in the docs, and they're like, okay, that's neat. Uh, you know, Microsoft runs it or whatever, but it's, are not aware that you can actually run it like locally on your own machine. It can work with, with a gist or whatever. And exactly. And what's exciting about it is that once you've got .NET, .NET in your machine, you've done your restores and you've got all the NuGet packages that you need, you can go into airplane mode. You can take it home where you might have slow uh, internet or no internet yeah. and potentially run your workshop on your, you know, off a USB key. The other thing that's really cool about it, if you just go to dot, dot .NET and you hit getting started, you can see, of course, we've got our video series on the side there, and you say, all right, let's go try dot .NET in your browser. See where it says code editor is loading on the right-hand side there? That is try dot .NET that's gonna show up. Look, and now I can go and say, hello, John, hit run code, and it shows up down here, and tr it's tr it is try dot .NET that is allowing it to happen there. I, my daughter's taking a computer class right now, and she was struggling with, you know, reading definitions in a book, and it wasn't really clicking. And I just went directly to this and oh, I showed yeah. her some of this stuff. And I'm like, look here, this is a constant. This is it. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, it's like interactive. You can totally see it. So. Now, some of you might be saying, well, is that running Blazor? Is that running? It? it really depends on the scenario, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the great thing about both Blazor and things like try.net is that in some instances, you can go and compile that and run that entirely with WebAssembly. And in other instances, if you were going to do something that required more power, you could go and do that on the server. Server yeah. and remote the results. I love that about Blazor, right? You've got both those options. You've definitely got a lot of choices. Yeah. So I want to make sure that people all do that. And also, if we go over to docs.microsoft.com, which we really can't say enough nice things about, docs has just really mm. come into its own in the last few years. Just people a used to joke thing. about how the docs were accurate but not helpful, mm -hmm. you know? And now it's yep. like, this is the first place to go. So if they go over there and they go and click on Learn C Sharp, they can go and see this introduction to C Sharp. And we'll actually walk them through Hello World numbers, branches, and loops. All of that will be done in the browser. Now, here's the fun part, and here's where we get into the inception part of things, right? If I go in here and I say, let's learn about numbers and floating point and things like that, this tutorial is, in fact, the same tutorial that we run through. So if ah, you, I love that. See? So go yeah. to C Sharp 101, go to .NET Core 101, and we'll walk through them with you yeah. interactively and learn along with you. That's the best. I love it. I love that because it's like, hey, I can do this, and then if I want to read more, it's in the docs. Yep. So. And it's not just 101 for C Sharp and .NET. I want to point out we've got .NET Core versus the .NET Framework. What do you want to choose? What about Xamarin 101? This isn't one video. These are video series. There's 100 mm -hmm. videos here, 85 videos, some huge number of videos. The number keeps going. The number, I'm going to just raise the number every time I see it, right? Here's Intro to Visual Studio. There's five videos. Intro to Containers and Docker with Shane and Lisa. Machine learning, lots of those. What do we got here? Like eight videos on machine learning. I'm going to just raise the number. There's a thousand <laughs> videos here available. There's Cam on any framework. There's Bridget on a pat. Done it for Apache Spark. And we're going to have even more videos coming soon as well. So all of this free. Please check it out. Good Very stuff cool. indeed. So uh, as we wrap up, uh, I think we're like what's this party? What are we doing? As a party? Yeah, so there's there was a party. There is a code party. So so you can follow the uh, first. I got to find. I've got a tab here for it. So I've got a tab for everything. There are virtual attendee parties today and tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, so you follow on Twitter the the um, .NET Conf hashtag. Uh, you can watch live on Twitch. The cool thing is there's there's a cool puzzles, there's trivia, and you can win big stuff, including like Xboxes and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you're also interacting live. There's, I think there's some uh, product team people on there like taking yep. questions and stuff. And they are doing a, uh, like a prizes. And then I want to point out again, we've talked about this a little bit today, the technical treasure hunt. Yeah. All of this at .netconf.net slash party. 
Mm -hmm. This technical treasure hunt, it's a scavenger hunt all over the internet. Yep. And some of it will require you to actually run some code. This was fun. We've been planning this stuff for months for, for .NET Conf, and it was so fun like talking to the, to the folks as they're like, coming up with these. And everybody who completes all the challenges gets a certificate to the .NET Foundation store. Nice. And uh, folks who, who can potentially win, I think there's a couple of Xboxes we talked about, and lots of different swag and cool stuff. Check out the clues at the bottom. There's links to all of the different friends and sponsors that are involved in the treasure hunt. Twilio, Telerik, Preemptive, Mobilize, Lead Tools, Nostis, DocuSign, Dockerly, DevExpress, Contra Security, all of our friends and partners trying to make things fun during this virtual attendee party. Where they're, again, they're back in the back yep. uh, and they're eating a lot of candy and drinking soda pop. That's true. So I'm talking about the party uh, folks like I'm talking about my kids. <laughs> they're up there <laughs> they're eating soda pop. What are they doing they shouldn't be doing? But uh, before we do that, why don't we actually take our friend Brian here to, we're going to head out and see some of the other folks because it's not just two people in front of the, mic, uh, the, the camera here. Right. It's a cast of thousands that are involved. So why don't you join us, my friend, and we'll yeah. go and see our folks out here and hope that they're ready uh, for us because we're coming out the door. Yeah. This is our friends here in Building 25 at Channel 9. I'm glad Seth opened the door for Thank me because I would have pushed door. on it. You knew that. My friends. Yeah, I would do that. <laughs> Look at all these people. And the big panning one shop. Yay! Everyone's just checking email. Look, look happier. What are you doing? Hey, there's snacks. There's no diabetes snacks, stuff. That's not no, inclusive. Uh, we need more sugar and Oh, there's Tim Tams, though. <laughs> I don't Hang know on. about those cupcakes. I, I, I didn't realize that there were Tim Tams. Oh, I need to do a Tim Tam. We have straws. I'm going to get a Tim Tam because you've got to do the Tim Tam slam. You got that? And Tim Tim. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Appreciate that. So we're going to head over to the party. We're going to show you this party done. Beth, tell us where to go. Come on back here. Come on this way. Right. Coming into the studio C. Woo! Are you drunk on peeps? It's peeps. It's Don't Jeff Fritz. Hello. 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 Welcome. <laughs> About time. Oh my gosh. We've been here getting ready, watching all the fun out in the other We're room. We're gonna have so much fun. We've got we've got trivia, we've got interviews, we've got more of the treasure hunt. We got forty prizes, I think, right? Oh forty! And we've got Scott. I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it up and give it to you, Jeff. It's all you, baby. Here we go. I'm gonna enjoy